The Japas scam, ladies and gentlemen, clearly amounts to willfully causing financial loss to the states. And the corporates must not go unpunished. I want to repeat this for emphasis. Fellow countrymen and women, the Japan scam clearly amounts to willfully causing financial loss to the state. And the corporates of sin must not go unpunished. We in the NDC and all well-being Ghanaians repose huge trust and confidence in the nation builder, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, to pursue and retrieve for the state public funds that have been lost to looting schemes such as this stinking Ejapa scandal, the PDS scandal, the Bosge scandal, and other acts of naked thievery by officials of the Kufuado Bagumia government and their party apparatchiks. As you may recall, the OSP established beyond every reasonable doubt that the Japan deal violated the public procurement law, the Public Financial Management Act, and the 1992 Constitution of Ghana. And therefore, the entire transaction was now void and of no effect. The most startling revelation of the OSP in its corruption risk assessment report on the Ejapa scam was the fact that some illegal payments were made to certain entities under the deal. These entities included Data Bank, a company which was founded and is still owned by Ken Oforiata, cousin of President Agufuado, the immediate past finance minister, who has been promoted to the position of senior presidential advisor on the economy and special envoy on international investments and the capital markets. The OSP also found similar illegal payments were made to African legal associates, a law firm belonging to Gadi Ochredakon, cousin of President Ekufuado, who today says he has resigned from Ghana's politics. Ladies and gentlemen, all these payments were found by the OSP to be unlawful, hence null and void. Yet till date, these payments, which did not benefit the country in any way, or provide any value to the country, have not been retrieved by the state. These are in these sad times for the people of Ghana. My brothers and sisters, we all know what good this gargantuan amount of money we are talking about, which is equivalent, like I said, to 153 million cities and 1.5 trillion old Ghana cities could have achieved in Ghana's bankrupt economy if he had been put to judicious use. This money could have sufficed to pay the cost of several months of treatment for all kidney patients in Ghana, 19 of whom died painfully following the shameful closure of the Kolebu renal unit over government's 4 million Ghana cities indebtedness. We could not get 4 million Ghana cities to clear the debt at the renal unit at Kolebu. For which reason, that whole unit was shut down for months, leading to the avoidable deaths of 19 kidney patients. Why? Because we didn't have 4 million Ghana cities. Yet we have wasted 153 million cities on a deal that never materialized, a deal that was aborted owing to our vigilance. Ladies and gentlemen, again, the colossal amount of money we are talking about could have been used to provide childhood vaccines to protect innocent babies from dying from childhood diseases due to the shortage of essential vaccines. You were all in this country not too long ago where we recorded shortages of childhood vaccines and children died in this country because government said they didn't have money.